A warm welcome to the program. This is Aviation This Week on Channels Television. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Bukola Ju Okitumbi. The International Air Transport Association are here to support the wearing of face coverings for passengers and masks for crew while on board aircraft as a critical part of a layered approach to biosecurity. This is to be implemented temporarily when people return to traveling by air. IATA, however, does not support mandating social distancing measures that would leave middle seats empty. How these rules will eventually play out when the industry opens up is a subject of interest. Plus, pilots return to the simulators in France. A background report is up next. Aviation is a global industry employing millions of people, underpinning the livelihood of tens of millions more, and acts as a part of the central nervous system of international business and leisure. Amidst the COVID-19 outbreak, almost every country across the globe had imposed restrictions to contain it. Now countries across the world have started to ease lockdown measures and are gearing up to resume both domestic and international travels. In the midst of this, the International Air Transport Association has details of its proposed temporary layered approach to biosecurity for restarting passenger flights amidst the crisis, with no single measure that will reduce risk and enable a safe restart of flying, but to layer in measures that are globally implemented and mutually recognized by governments can achieve the needed outcomes in phases. First, Pre-flights IATA foresees the need for governments to collect passengers' data in advance of travel, including health information, which should be accomplished by using well-tested channels such as those used for e-visas or electronic travel authorization programs. At the departure airports, IATA foresees several layers of protective measures. Access to terminal buildings should be restricted to airport and airline workers and travellers, with exception being made for those accompanying passengers with disabilities or are unaccompanied minors. Temperature screening by trained government staff at every point to the terminal building. Fiscal distancing through all passenger processes, including queue management. Use of face coverings for passengers and masks for staff in line with local regulations. Self-service options for check-in, used by passengers as much as possible to reduce contact points and queues. This includes remote check-in, electronic home printed boarding passes, automated bag drops and self-boarding. Boarding should be made as efficient as possible with redesigned gate areas, congestion reducing boarding priorities and luggage limitations. Cleaning and sanitization of high tough areas. In line with local regulations, this includes wide availability of hand sanitizers. <laughs> At an airport in Paris, safety measures have been boosted as France lifts a strict lockdown and air travel is expected to pick up in line with IHS demand. 200 contactless alcohol gel dispensers are placed across the terminals. Floor markings are spaced one meter apart, indicating proper distancing, and cleaners disinfect boots and counters. Masks are compulsory. The aim is really to have the maximum information possible on safety measures before arriving at the airport. Airline companies are doing it well that in the airport and on board the planes, we aim for a series of measures that allow for a safe, controlled environment. And when possible, when you have a person whose health is fragile, this can be detected. The country has banned travel of more than 100 kilometers, and airport passengers must show certificates of exemption, such as work, schooling, and medical reasons. Security checks are also done as contactless as possible using metal detectors and shoes and body scan. Trays that enter the X-ray machines are disinfected after each use. 
It's a whole ecosystem of trust from the entry point at the departure terminal until the exit point at the arrival terminal, passing through the airline company. The whole airline sector is mobilized so that the passengers can tell themselves, I can travel by air in full safety. The CDG airport, France's biggest, also installed thermal cameras that measures arriving passengers' temperatures. Any arriving passenger with a temperature above 38 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit will be recommended for a checkup and get tested for COVID-19. The situation is not different at the Dubai airport, as temperature screening and face masks have become common sight at airports to mitigate the spread of the new coronavirus. The UAE has since allowed some repatriation flights and eased other restrictions in the Gulf state, though it is not clear when normal flights will restart. For the airport authority, fiscal distancing could pose an issue to airfares if airlines are restricted to selling fewer tickets in order to keep some seats empty. We are going to have to take whatever measures that are necessary to protect both the travelling public and our staff. And until we get a more satisfactory, effective and timely method of dealing with that to eliminate social distancing, we are clearly going to have to adopt those. But the impact on both the confidence and the ability to travel will be very significant indeed. Regaining public confidence in the safety of air travel is seen by the aviation industry as a significant challenge. Here in Nigeria, the Federal Airport Authority says that it has commenced fumigation of international airports in Lagos, Abuja and Port Hackett, ahead of reopening of flight operations. Fan insists that the fumigation exercise was in line with the efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19 pandemic ravaging the world. Now to India. Domestic flights resumed across that country on Monday, May the 25th, even as the country posted its biggest single-day jump in cases of COVID-19. In a number of airports in the country, passengers were asked to maintain social distancing in queues, wear masks, undergo thermal screening and sanitize their luggage to prevent the spread of the new coronavirus. Passengers on a Vistara flight from New Delhi received face shields and flight attendants wore personal protective equipment. <laughs> Airlines including Indigo, India's biggest carrier, Spicejet and Vistara, a joint venture between Tata Group and Singapore Airlines, had been preparing to resume operations from Monday with about a third of their capacity amid strict rules. Still on rules for resumption, IATA foresees several layers of protective measures for in-flights as well. Face coverings required for all passengers and non-surgical masks for crew. Simplified cabin service and pre-packaged catering to reduce interaction between passengers and crew. Reduce congregation of passengers in the cabin, for example by prohibiting queues for washrooms enhanced and more frequent deep cleaning of the cabin. The airline body believes two areas which could be game changers in facilitating efficient travel until a vaccine is found include COVID-19 testing. IATA supports testing when scalable, accurate and fast results are available. Testing at the start of the travel process could create a sterile travel environment that could reassure travellers and the governments. Immunity passports. IATA would support the development of immunity passports to segregate no-risk travellers at a time when these are backed by medical science and recognised by governments. IATA reiterates its opposition to social distancing on board aircrafts and quarantine measures on arrival. Well, IATA brought over certain uh, guidelines, which I congratulate them for doing, because that is the only way 
we can overcome uh, this uh, COVID-19 restart of the aviation industry globally. And these uh, guidelines are specific to aviation and they are very, very vital to give the passengers the comfort that when they are inside the airplane, it is the best place to be inside the airplane, meaning that all the fears of uh, spread of the COVID-19 uh, inside the airplane will not uh, will not happen or will be minimized to the minimum. We love what they have done. And uh, to even go further, I think they are involving ICAO with the tax force that they have put in place to ensure all the contracting states adopt these guidelines and utilize them to restart their aviation industry. Yes, I am confident, even with the Nigerian Civil Aviation, have rolled out plans and uh, most of these uh, guidelines that ICAO and IATA has put on together has been enshrined into our uh, Nigerian Civil Aviation uh, guidelines for restarting the aviation industry. The whole idea is to give the confidence to the passengers that the moment they are inside the airplane, the risk of spreading the virus is minimal. Physical distancing cannot be done inside the aircraft, but using the face mask and with the airflow in the aircraft will definitely eliminate the, or reduce the risk of uh, uh, spread of the COVID-19. So I think uh, it's, it's reality and practicality. I think they have looked at it. They have seen that, listen, we're burying our heads in the sun. If we say we are going to co cover the first seat, what happened to the next row? What happened to uh, people on the line? So it is extremely difficult, difficult to have physical distancing inside an aircraft. That is true. Now, we might say that uh, what happens if you block the seat? Then what happens to the next row? What happens if people want to go to use the bathroom? So those are the things I think Ayata looked at and said, OK, what can we do when you are in, in, a, in, a, in a close environment? What can you do? We have agreed that the crew will wear, of course, masks, which is uh, non-surgical masks, and they will wear gloves, and they will have to uh, uh, limit the the uh, the number of times of contact with the passengers to ensure that uh, by the time they are boarding the passengers, they are well protected. But since they are not going to be serving drinks and everything inside the, the airplane, when the airplane is airborne, I believe they will maintain uh, a minimal contact with the passengers. A California-based company is pushing for airlines and airports to adopt the use of ultraviolet sea lights in their cleaning protocols when travelers return to the air in higher numbers. DMA UCV Innovations created a UVC emitting cleaning machine called the Gem Falcon, specifically for the airline industry in 2014, but hasn't had the demand for it until now. The Gem Falcon is intended to be stationed at the airport. And as the plane comes in, the passengers will get off, the cleaning crew will come on and do what they normally do. They'll pick up the trash, they'll wipe up the spills. And then the final step will be this terminal disinfection with the germ falcon system. This is coming on the heels of the United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention's new guidelines for cleaning aircraft when symptomatic passengers are identified, but using UVC as a disinfectant was not among them. For the company, the use of the UVC is important because when emitted, it can damage the nucleic acids within an organism and prevent it from replicating. The Gem Falcon is a food cut sized robotic tool with UVC lights attached to mechanical wings. After the operator boards the plane, the wings expand and Gem Falcon is pushed up and down the aisles while emitting UVC lights onto surfaces of the cabin that may have germs transmitted by passengers. It also uses a protective barrier as shield to protect the operator from the ultraviolet light, which can be harmful depending on the amount of UV light to which a person is exposed. According to the World Health Organization, there are three types of UV lights, UVA, UVV, and UVC, with the UVC being the most damaging type of UV radiation. Air France pilots return to the simulator to sharpen their skills as they prepare to return to the air. And the Nigerian Aviation Authority gives guidance to local airlines ahead of reopening. That's after the break. Do join us again.
In recent times, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority issued a post-COVID-19 restart advisory circular containing protocol for shadow carriers. The NCAA mandates all scheduled commercial airlines to apply and obtain an approval from the authority to resume operations once the restriction is lifted. General Manager of Public Affairs at the NCAA, Sam Adurogoye, said the proactive measure was to prepare the stakeholders ahead of the resumption and have seamless return to safe flights. In the restart protocol, the authority will grant approval to applicants upon satisfactory assessment of airlines for compliance with all relevant COVID-19 guidelines and applicable Nigerian Civil Aviation regulation. Elsewhere in France, Air France is putting its grounded pilots through their paces in the flight simulator as the airline prepares to restore flights to dozens of destinations that had been suspended under coronavirus lockdown measures. The French carrier, part of Air France KLM, plans to increase capacity to about 10% of normal levels by mid-June 2020. European safety rules require extra training for any pilot who has not carried out at least three takeoffs and landings in the last three months, although Air France sets the bar higher at five takeoffs and landings. Captain Emmanuel Mistrali, a 25 year veteran with the airline, and his co pilot ran through challenging scenarios in the Airbus A350 simulator, closely watched by a flight instructor. In the training session, we had an engine failure, strong winds with big gusts. It's piloting and control experience that we haven't had for weeks. We do training very regularly, plenty of procedures, checklists and technical knowledge. We have continued to keep up these procedures during the lockdown. But unfortunately, when we are grounded, we don't have the routine, those little reflexes, the sixth sense, and above all, you may practice your skills at home. But this is teamwork. It's the orchestra. Ms. Rally has been out of action since his last flight to Sao Paulo three weeks ago. By sharing out the few services still running, Air France's 4,000 pilots can each fly at least one trip in May and June. By mid-June, Air France aims to restore about 600 flights per week to 110 destinations, travel restrictions permitting, still falling short of its usual weekly tally of more than 7,000 services to 196 destinations. It's a recovery which is very slow. From mid-June, we will serve more destinations, but it won't fix everything, and I don't have a crystal ball to see into the future. I don't know when the Schengen borders will be completely open again or what is going to happen in the countries around the world. So we are showing that we are flexible and proactive to get the pilots ready for when the time comes and to have them back in the planes in the best security conditions when we need to. Finally, Germany's rescue package for flagship carrier Lufthansa has sailed through as government and the airline reached a preliminary deal on a $9.8 billion bailout. Germany's finance minister, Olaf Scholz, added that the airline had been an operationally healthy company before the coronavirus outbreak, as well as profitable and with good future prospects, but had gotten into trouble due to the pandemic. Diese Zeit nicht ausreizen, sondern According to a World Economic Forum analysis, Nigeria ranks 129 out of 136 nations in travel and tourism competitiveness in 2017. This has not stopped tour operators from taking tourists to breathtaking views and travel sites within and outside the country. But now, this is no longer possible, as companies that run these businesses cannot keep their word due to the threat of the coronavirus. And so I've just brought a sample of 
Selling travel packages for guided domestic trips and to international events like the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo is one key business that has now met a brick wall. So far, we're running at a, at a loss of about 12 to 15 million naira just from the trips that we had already paid for in full. We had already finished planning. Customers had already paid in part four. And then the pandemic happened and, um, you know, people had not were not able to finish up their payments because they're scared because they're not willing to go on trips but we had already gone ahead to tidy up all the experiences like we normally do in advance since march 29 lagos and the country's capital abuja as well as ugun state have been on a lockdown in an attempt to curb the spread of the coronavirus a lockdown has placed restrictions on commercial and international travels Closure of social and economic activities with exception to health workers, media professionals and food retailers. For the travel industry, the pandemic could cripple the sector until it generates zero revenue. The fear that would happen after this is going to be, the impact is, is, is I don't think we can fully quantify it. I think some of that impact is going to slow down the growth that we've seen in the industry. The industry has been growing about 11% year on year. Now we're going to see a slowdown in that growth, um, if not back to negative numbers, before we have to rebuild the, the confidence of customers to actually encourage that travel. Aisha Yusufu is a hotelier that manages the Ori suite and apartment in Abuja. Things haven't been any better over there. Her hotel has downsized since the lockdown from over 40 staff to less than 10 employees. She expects to lay off more workers in the weeks to come. We'll definitely have to reduce it to the barest minimum, like maybe security and maybe a housekeeper to keep the grounds clean. So yeah, we're looking at dropping it dropping um, the present overhead, that's the present skeletal overhead, to maybe lower than maybe another 40 to 60 percent. Away from Nigeria to Kenya, where the wildlife tourism sector has evaporated. At Kenya's Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, orphaned baby elephants came in for their morning feed, but the hundreds of visitors that would normally be waiting to watch them feed were absent. So were their dollars. With the airport and borders closed in the East African country in a bid to stop the spread of the novel coronavirus, revenue for many of the conservation projects required to protect some of the continent's most endangered animals is absent. Obviously, Kenya will be so hard hit by the lack of tourism this year. I believe in the last few years it's brought in over a billion US dollars in revenue for Kenya. So it will be a challenge moving forward, but one that we need to take on and we will continue to do our work. Normally at this time, they'll be out for the public session, which is no longer taking place until further notice. And uh, that's why we just let them out and let them do what they want to do, browse, play, and enjoy. The SWT relies on online donations and fees paid by visitors at their Nairobi Elephant Orphanage to run 13 anti-poaching teams and five mobile veterinary teams, carrying out aerial surveillance and ground patrols to protect elephants and rhinos. But the orphanage closed its doors to visitors on March 15 after the country recorded its first case of COVID-19 stripping the trust of the $4.71 fee that is paid by up to 500 visitors daily. Kenya earned $1.6 billion from tourism last year, money that supports a sprawling hospitality industry as well as conservation and anti-poaching efforts. This is where we close on the program. Thank you so much for watching. Do stay home and stay safe. I'm Bukola Ju Kitumbi.